Good morning. Hey, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, Anna Bradley. How are you? Good. Hey, let's go ahead and get started, please. That means you stop talking so I can talk, junior hires. Thank you. All right, so uh, this is my friend, Mrs. Powell. Everybody say hi, Mrs. Powell. I have some announcements that concern her, and then she has an announcement. So first of all, seniors, uh, every day uh, during Red 4 and Navy 4, you can meet Miss On Thursdays. That's what I meant to say. On Thursdays. You can meet her in the computer lab, and she will be happy to help you with college applications. Okay, also seniors, isn't that, does that stress you out, Sawyer? Yeah, yeah. It's getting time to do that, guys. And she's, but she's gonna, she'll be happy to help you guys out with that. And um, also make an appointment to stop by and talk to her about your college stuff. Uh, any questions that you have about college, she wants to help you guys with that. I, I'm gonna just let you guys know that this woman is amazing. Um, she loves you guys. She wants to see you succeed, and she has a ton of knowledge and can help walk you guys through this really scary transition. You guys are super fortunate to have her here uh, at Trinity Christian School. Oh, and better take advantage of that before February, right? Yeah. So you guys, you guys make sure and, and get in there, see her quickly, okay? Then, um, hey, on Monday... On Monday, uh, in the library, during Flex, anyone interested in talking to the U.S. Army recruiter, um, be in the library on Monday. The cool thing about doing uh, the Army is that if you uh, serve your country, then they'll pay for your education in college. So find out how that program works. And now Ms. Powell has a great announcement. Okay. Sorry, it seems like all of this is directed at seniors with college stuff. I also want to announce that Republican Club is meeting in the library during Flex. Okay. Um, I want to bring up a student that has achieved something that's really phenomenal. You know, every year you guys take the PSAT. You are going to take it again this year, October 19th, including eighth graders. Okay, junior high. For eighth graders, you'll take it for the first time ever starting this year all the way through 11th grade. Last year, we had our students take it. If you were a junior, you enter into a scholarship competition. And we just got the results back. And one of our now seniors um, scored one of the highest scores in the country. And she is now up for a full scholarship to pretty much any university of her choice. And so Juliet Fernari, come up. <laughs> So if you need tutoring for the PSAT or SAT, you talk to her. Um, we just want to congratulate what you've achieved, which is phenomenal. And you guys congratulate her when you see her. Okay. All right, guys, let's rise for pledges. Today is our last day for Watermelon Daring Flex, so make sure and take advantage of that. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance I pledge allegiance There's nothing worth more that could ever come close Nothing could compare You're our living hope Your presence, God I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart beats 
comes free And my shame is undone Your presence, God and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence God nothing worth more that could ever come close nothing could compare you're our living hope your presence God and I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence God Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by Your presence, Lord Your presence, God Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness
for this wonderful day and for this time of worship um, where we're able to worship you freely. Um, God, I just pray that as we go throughout our day, we will remember that we are the sons and daughters of the King of Kings um, and that we will hold our heads high and we will honor you in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. All right. I just want to talk to you guys real quickly. The um, Yesterday, uh, Coach Gilbert did a great job of talking about how we can not let our experience from last week fade. And I want to kind of do the same topic, but from a different perspective today. So, um, you know, because nobody wants to have an experience at camp and then go right back to doing the same things that they were doing. So, uh, let's talk about some practical things to make that happen. First of all, you know, when I was young, they would talk about the fruit of the Spirit, and I love this verse, but I misunderstood this whenever I was young. I thought this meant, if you're going to be a good Christian, you need to act this way. How many of you guys have thought that before? Okay, a few of you guys. So um, that's what I, I thought, oh, you know what, if I'm going to be a good Christian, I've got to have love. Oh, I have to try to make myself have faith. I need to learn to be patient with people. But what I have learned about this verse is that this is not the fruit of me doing my best. This is the fruit of the Spirit. When the Spirit is at work in my life, this is what it looks like. And one cool thing that I learned about fruit, which is kind of a duh thing, but it was cool to me, was that fruit is not for the tree. Fruit is for those that come to the tree, right? So the fruit of the Spirit in Gentry's life is not for her. It's for those that she has relationship with around her, okay? And so 
but but there's nothing, there's no, the tree doesn't have to try to produce fruit. Okay, and the same way we don't have to try to produce this fruit in our life. This is the fruit of the Spirit. And so you say to yourself, well, but I'm, that's not me. I don't look like this. Well, Jesus tells us in John what the secret to producing fruit is. And he talks about it here. It's, it, he says, uh, and, and I've really butchered this whole section as far as taking stuff out. I recommend that you read John 5, 15 for yourself. But Jesus says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the gardener. And then he says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. And then he tells us some, an important key to this. Apart from me, you can do nothing. He says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. This is my command, love each other. So he gives us this, this picture of abiding in the vine remaining in the vine in the same way that a branch once it's removed from a vine can no longer produce fruit we cannot produce fruit without him we need to stay connected to him okay so you say okay Mr. Haven you said this was going to be practical what is uh what where's the practical part to this um how many of you guys remember my son Jordan how many of you guys had him as a student Right, it's our seniors and our sophomores, is that right? Seniors had him for Bible and sophomores had him for theater. Um, anyway, today, he's a children's pastor at our church. And twice a month, uh, I volunteer in children's church. And at the end of every single service, he gives the, the kids the opportunity to make Jesus the leader of their life. I think leader is a great word for elementary kids, right? Because it, it's a whole lot easier word to to conjure its meaning than Lord, right? We don't use the word Lord in any other context. But he says, he gives kids the opportunity to make Jesus the leader of their life. And then he says, now, if you want to grow in your relationship with the Lord, you need to do four things. He says, you need to love God. You need to love people. You need to pray. And you need to read your Bible. And those are the four things that he gives them to help them grow in their relationship with the Lord. It's a pretty easy list, right? I mean, when you look at the, the when, they, when Jesus said that you can take the whole gospel, the prophets, the, the law, and you boil it down to two things, love God and love people. So that's where the first two come from. And then we pray and then we read our Bible. If we want our mind renewed, how many of you guys, uh, like me, need your mind renewed? I, I got to just say, the way that I was brought up in lots of ways was just wrong. And, and I need to know the truth. There's lots of you people, I was one of them, who thought very badly of myself. I listened to what the world said about me, and I lived my life believing that. I needed to have the word of God come in and change my mind, renew my mind, transform my thinking so that I believed about myself what the Bible said about me, what, how Jesus felt about me. Guys, if you're not there yet, there is life in the word of God. And if you will believe what it says about you instead of what the world says about you, that makes a huge difference. It's like I remember it, it felt like I was carrying a weight everywhere I went, an impossible weight for me to carry. But whenever I started believing what he said about me, instead of what I thought everybody else was saying about me, it absolutely changed who I was. He renewed my mind. Guys, we can't have that happen if we don't know what he says about us. And the way we know what he says about us is by reading the Bible. Praying is a conversation with him. And frankly, it should be a, a day-long conversation, right? It's not just about blessing the food or now I lay me down to sleep. 
okay? Spend the day talking to him. Lord, I, I need help with this test. Lord, what she just said really hurt me. Help me have a right attitude toward that. And I know that she's hurt too. Please be with her. Just spend the day breathing prayers to him. A, a, a conversation that lasts all day long. On the love people thing, you know, I found that your generation is probably more selfish and self-centered than previous generations. How many of you guys have heard of the phrase, the greatest generation? Who, who, what's the greatest generation? Zane, what's, what's the greatest generation? The World War II era, guys. These were people who thought so little of themselves that they were willing to sacrifice their lives for the good of their neighbors, for the good of this country. And they truly set an example that we should follow in that area. But what has happened since then is everybody's watching out for me. And it's a cultural disease. And unfortunately, we're all involved in the culture, so we're exposed to that all the time. But if we just have Jesus' attitude, who he was always looking out for other people and love people, then we will truly learn to abide in the vine. The, the first thing that's on here, but the last thing I want to talk about is love God. There's an example in the Bible where Jesus is having dinner at a Pharisee's house and, and a, a woman who was a, a notorious sinner comes in and she just falls at Jesus' feet and she's worshiping him and she's crying and her tears are, are falling on Jesus' feet and she's wiping them with her hair. And the Pharisee is indignant. And, and I really think that the, the point that Jesus is trying to get to with this story or at least one of the points, is that there's two kinds of people, two kinds of Christians. There's the one that says, you know what, I'm not really that bad of a guy. God probably likes me best because I'm such a great guy, and he's, he's lucky to have me on his team. And then there's those who understand not only what, where they were, but the grace and the mercy that was poured out on them that they didn't deserve. And the only response that can come forth from them once they realize how, what they have been saved from is to fall down at his feet and worship him and to love him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. It's a, I mean... We're going to do what he said and, and not what we want. But I think that comes from a heart that says, I wouldn't be where I am without you. I, 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 you gave so much to me. The, this little bit that I can give back is not near enough to repay you, but I want to show you that I love you. And when we get to that point, I think we really are loving God and abiding in the vine. So these four things are, are, if you will incorporate these into your daily life, will help you to not have roller coaster experiences in your life and, and really help for the, the fact that he spoke to you at high school retreat, the fact that he speaks to you and through you during missions week. It helps to keep that closeness with him because you're abiding in him. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you for, for Lord, what you've done in our lives. Last week was great, Lord. We just really appreciate you meeting us there. Holy Spirit, it's just you living in us that produces fruit. And it's abiding in the vine, staying connected to Jesus that allows us to produce that fruit. Lord, I pray that you would speak to individually to each of our hearts in ways that we can purposefully abide in the vine. 
Lord's practical things that we can do on a daily basis to stay connected to you so that you can produce fruit through us and that that fruit will give life to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, hey, before you guys head to flex,